the children's church. Of course, we got Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for the different ages come, ages come to be with us. Uh, we would love to have you as well. And if you have any tithes and offerings tonight that need to be received, you can do so. Uh, at the end of service, you can put them in the plates this evening uh, at the end of service before we close. Amen. Uh, again, we're so glad to have you tonight in the house of the Lord. Some folks that are visiting with us, we're so honored to have you uh, tonight as well. Make sure that you speak to these visitors. But if you're able to, let's stand up all over the house tonight. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, man, I'm going to ask you this evening if you would lead us in prayer tonight. And let's just tonight, let's just let the, the Spirit have His way tonight. Amen. I preached on this this morning that there's more. Amen. God has great and mighty things in store, I believe, for our church and for our people. And let us hunger and desire all that God has for us. Amen. Brother Wayne, when you pray. That's right. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for bringing us here tonight, God, to, to sing praises to you and to hear the preached word. Father, I pray through the power of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit, God, you change our lives, Lord. And that we'll be different when we leave than when we came in here, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray and everybody say it.
scared me with these keys. Hey, I felt something. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get this one
no giant too big that he cannot handle. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that. I was speaking with somebody. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Pray. Would you give our praise to him? I was speaking to somebody earlier, and, uh, and they were talking about somebody that did not believe in the Lord. And, and, uh, and you know, I said, how, I don't know how you make it through, to be honest with you. That's right. I don't know how you make it through life without that hope of Jesus Christ. I, I face too many mountains. I face too many giants. And I'm so thankful, like David, that I have somebody there on my side that I can lean on. Amen. That I knew that was greater than the mountains that I was facing. Amen. So I hope tonight uh, that you have that as well. I pray that you do. If you don't, you need to give him tonight. And right. you put your faith and put your hope and your trust in him. But if you've got your Bibles, the Numbers chapter 21 tonight is where we're going to go. I, I want to uh, say a special something tonight. Uh, we got uh, a young man here tonight, Brother Lawrence Ziegler, here tonight visiting with us. And I'm so honored to have him tonight. He did many years ago. Uh, they came him and his wife, Sister Ernestine, uh, came over to church with us. And uh, uh, when we really were started, and he played the guitar, he played the guitar, and the harmonica, and I think the tambourine all at the same time. I'll believe it or not. Uh, but I'm just honored to have him here tonight. And uh, I'm going to tell this, this, this little story about Brother Lawrence. And uh, something that I had never forgotten, uh, I saw the, the hand of God work on me. Amen. Amen. Uh, many years ago when we were over there, Brother, Brother Lawrence's heart, we were in Sunday school. I was in the other building. They were in the other building. Brother Lawrence's heart went into fibrillation. Right. In other words, or, or, or you know, fibrillation where it just shut it, it stopped beating. Right. And, and it, he just kind of fell over in the seat. And uh, there was a lady, Sister Ern, and Sister Julie's mom was there, was a nurse. And uh, she, they started doing the CPR and, and, and everything. And uh, Daddy always liked, liked to tell him. Uh, that as they were doing the CPR and, and the mouth to mouth, he got so excited, instead of blowing air in, he sucked it out, sucked his false teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they done CPR with yeah. him, and got him, and the ambulance finally got there. And I looked at it, Brother Lawrence. I saw him. I never told you this, but I saw it when they put those, those monitors on him. They were doing this right here. And they shocked him, and then all of a sudden, that heart went back. Went back yeah. And that's probably been 10 years ago. I, I would imagine. Then, and there he is still about walking. 17 years ago. 17 years ago. That's been a minute, amen. Amen. And I think that, that wasn't the only time he let church out, amen. And a, a little while after that, he came back and going to give a testimony. He had a defibrillator put in. And he was telling the testimony, and, and he grabbed the cord of the pipe at the time. And we thought it had shocked him. And maybe it did. I don't know, Brother Lawrence. I don't know. But his defibrillator started going off. And he was trying to give his testimony, and, he, and all of a sudden his notes just went everywhere. And uh, that that defibrillator was, was, I mean, it, it was hitting him, amen. It kind of laid him on the ground. And, and that thing was hitting him, and his feet would go up, he would holler, and the whole church would go, oh! <laughs> I, saw, I saw one man run out the back door, he was out of that big, I didn't even see him. <laughs> this is the honest to God truth. I'll never, I'll never forget this. That thing was going on. Brother Lawrence was speaking in tongues, the Spirit started yeah. touching him. And I grabbed the oil and I put it on his forehead. And I'm telling you, just like that. I remember that. And that thing stopped and he calmed, it just calmed down. The, the, the thing stopped shocking him and everything. Uh, but I have some fond memories with Brother Lawrence and, and Sister Ernestine. And I, I'm just thankful for him to be here. Amen. 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 Amen.
that the Hebrew children were making their way through the wilderness and they were on the way to the promised land. And it says here in verse uh, 4 of chapter 21 and Numbers, it says, Then they journeyed from Mount uh, Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And it says this, On the way, the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. The soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. Let's stop there for the, for the, for the reading of the Word of God and let's pray over it tonight. Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of, of being in this house tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to come here tonight and worship you in the spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you for the, the good singing and the fellowship we've already been uh, having this evening. And Lord, now if we come at this time that we... Preach the word of God, Lord. If we break the bread of life, I just ask for your anointing tonight. I ask you to take over in this place and help me to preach exactly what we stand in need to hear. Open up our hearts and our ears to receive it. And let us be changed and moved in the name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 And amen. Those here in the scriptures, they are making their way unto the Canaan land, unto the promised uh, land. The Bible says that the people uh, became discouraged uh, on the way. I believe the King James Version says that they became discouraged because of the way. And you know when I look at that and I think about uh, the way, as we think about our lives, uh, many times it can be discouraging. Amen. Anybody ever been discouraged before because of some of the things in which that you were facing? Have you ever been discouraged because of maybe the sickness or the mountain? I'm just singing about that you were looking at and the giants that you were facing, you weren't quite sure how you were going to make it. Or maybe like then, you keep traveling through the wilderness and it's just one battle after another battle after another battle and you're thinking, am I ever going to get to the promised land? Am I ever going to get to a place of rest? Uh, you know what I say that about life, but it says they're in the way. You know what? Sometimes the way, the Christian way, the Christian life can also be discouraging. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been discouraged uh, as a Christian in your Christian walk? Amen. Yeah. Some of you are too holy to, to admit that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I've been discouraged in my Christian walk yeah. before. I've been discouraged because some of the things of, in which that I have had to face. I've been discouraged because of, of things that may have happened in ministry or happened in the church or little people grumbling over here and little people complaining over here. And I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. Uh, why am I having to listen to this today? And anybody ever got discouraged because of the way we've been discouraged in life? It happens to all of us. We all face things in which that will discourage us. Now, look what these people have done. I don't know how you react when life becomes discouraging. I don't know how you respond uh, in your times of, uh, of life not going your way. But notice what these folks do. Look at verse 5. It says, And the people spoke against God, yeah. and they spoke against Moses. Yeah. Moses was leading them. God was leading him. And they said, we're discouraged. we tired of this. Come on. And it's your fault, Moses. Right. And it's God's fault too. Amen. They began to blame the leadership. And then they went as far to, to fuss against God. Amen. Come on. Notice what they go on to say. They, they, this is what they said. And this was their reason. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food. There's no water. And our souls loathe this worthless bread. Amen. Ooh, have mercy. I'm going to tell you something right there. That was a slap in the face to God. If you know the truth. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Miracle Whip? Amen. Yeah. Heard of Miracle Whip? God sent me a miracle bread. Amen. Yeah. God sent. He's the, he is the maker of wonder bread. Whether you knew that or not. The Bible says that when the people got hungry in the wilderness, that he would allow in the morning the dew would come down and it would form the manna. And all they had to do is go out there and pick it up. Right. How ungrateful. How ungrateful to say this worthless bread. It was miracle. 
that God has blessed him. Let me say something to you. You better be careful when life gets discouraged. Be very careful when life gets discouraging because it can make you ungrateful for your blessings. When life gets burdensome and things get difficult, Danny, we got to be careful because this old flesh will rise up in us, selfishness will rise up in us, and we will forget how blessed we truly are. We will forget the miracles God has done in our life on a daily basis. Be careful not to become ungrateful. There's not a one of you in here tonight that's got breath in your lungs. You have got something to be thankful for. You've got something to wake up every single day and say, Thank you, Lord. Let's practice it right now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This morning when Amanda texts me, she always gets here most time first, and she texts me. And she said, I just want to let you know I didn't come early to do your sermon and, and get the notes printed out. She said, Ain't no power. And, and, and I don't know why. The Lord just said, Don't worry about it. Sometimes things in life don't go the way that you want them to. Sometimes there's certain things that you're going to have to face and struggles which you would have never chosen for yourself. But don't let it make you ungrateful for what God has done in your life. They were ungrateful. They were ungrateful for the miracles God had provided them and blessed them with. And then they began to grumble and complain against God. Come on, they, they, instead of praising and being grateful, they just grumbled and complained. They said there's no food, there's no water, and this bread, it's worthless. I wonder what you do when you go through that. It's easy for us to read that, amen, and say, man, they should have they been praising God. They should have been shouting, amen. But how do you respond when you get in those types of situations? It's always easy to point at the other person and tell them what they should have done. But it's a lot harder to look in the mirror and tell yourself what to do. Why is that? We want to always give other people advice, amen. Come on. Sometimes we don't want to swallow the pills, we try to hand out, amen. <laughs> Woo. You know what? You can grumble and complain. You can become ungrateful, but can I tell you something? It won't be you good. That's right. Amen. You can grumble and complain. You can talk about how unfair your life is. Right. You can talk about, well, why does the Sally Sue got this and Sally Sue got that? Life's not fair. Why don't I have it? It ain't going to do you no good. Come on. Come on. I have found out, to be the truth, that actually bring more sorrow to right. your life. Amen. When you become ungrateful and you grumble and complain, Against other people, maybe it's a spouse. Uh, maybe it's the boss man that you work with. Uh, maybe it's somebody else in your life. You know what I found to do? It don't put you in a better place. It puts you in a worse place. Yeah. It will always leave That's right. more pain That's right. instead of less. Yeah. Look at what we read in the next verse. In verse 7, it says, Therefore, the people came to Moses. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm back there. I'm sorry. I missed the verse. Moses, I missed the verse. So the Lord, they, they said, this worthless bread. They were ungrateful, grumbling and complaining. God has got a wonderful complaint for us. Yeah, he, he, does. Does. he knows how to handle it. Amen. Yeah. Notice what he done. He said, I'll, I'll take care of that. Amen. And so the Bible says that the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. They bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Amen. Come on. I think about this uh, yesterday. Uh, I, I had come here yesterday morning. The sermon I preached this morning, God gave me yesterday morning about 4 o'clock. I couldn't sleep. I come to church early and then I left and we went to some work about 9 o'clock. And by the time I got to work, Sister Nikki had texted me with a picture of a snake that was caught inside the cook shed out there. And uh, she said, I was going to clean it up, but the devil ran me out. <laughs> But she said she finally had to get brave, and somehow, I don't know what she's done with the snake, but she got, got him out. But some of you are deathly afraid of snakes. Can you imagine these old uh, fiery serpents came into the camp and began biting people, and many of them died? Complaining will never prosper anybody. 
Amen. Think of an ungrateful young person will never benefit you in this life. <laughs> Notice this. Boy, how they had a change of heart all of a sudden. Amen. Verse 7 says this. And therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we've spoken against the Lord and against you. Praise the Lord to take away the serpent for us. You know what I just thought about? They were complaining. No more water, no food. The, the, the bread is worthless. And you know what? God said, well, I'll just make it look it could be worse. Right. Y'all know what? Sometimes we get so caught up right. and we don't recognize, well, it could be worse. Yes. They found out that it could be worse. Amen? Yes. And so you might want to be great and thankful for what you've got and where right. you're at. Amen? Yes. Yes. You can always look around and you see somebody that's going through something that's a little worse than you. Amen? God sent them fiery serpents in there. They really started facing some suffering in there. Their, their, their mind began to change. They said, oh, Lord, Moses prayed to take these things uh, uh, away from us. God's got a way to handle the complaint department. Amen. Why do we have to be so hard-headed sometimes? We be hard-headed, amen. Yes, God has a way to take care of that. He has a way in which... Uh, he can get to us and make us grateful again. I found that That's in this right. group. Right. The people began to cry out with sin. They said, Moses, pray for us. You know what I find interesting? In verses in 7 and 8, it goes on to say, we sin. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8 says, Then the Lord says to Moses, Make a serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he shall live. And he did. They looked at the serpent, he put it up on the pole, and they would look at it, and the light wouldn't kill it. You know what I thought about when I was looking at this? God didn't have to have mercy on them. God did not have to have mercy on those people. They had grumbled, they complained, they said, Your miracles ain't are worthless to us. He did not have to have grace and mercy on them, but he did. Yes, Lord. Right. And he spared many of their lives. Whether you know or not, that serpent being lifted up on that pole is a foreshadowing of Christ that would come and be lifted up on a pole, on a rugged cross, amen. And for those that look upon him, those that put their faith in him, would be spared from the sting of death, amen. Praise God that in Christ, I have overcome death, hell, and the grave because of what Jesus has done by putting my faith in him. And do you know what? He didn't have to do that for me. I surely didn't deserve it. I surely was not worthy of him to die for me. But he saw fit to save somebody like me. He had mercy on me. And thank God for his loving kindness in his mercy. That are new for us every morning. Jeremiah said if it wasn't for his mercy, we would be consumed. Yes, Lord. God was merciful to them. And he's certainly merciful to you. Yes. There's another thing right there you'd be thankful for every day. That God is merciful unto you. He doesn't give us often time to walk into the earth. Those people right. deserved Come on. to die. Right. Boy, they talk to God. That's right. You know what? I'll, I'll just let you know that we deserve to go to heaven. That's right. right. We, we don't deserve to go to heaven. That's right. There's nothing in me. I like what I heard the other day on 101. This lady was talking about how she illustrates uh, us reflecting the Lord. And she was talking about how we uh, are very much like the moon. The moon. What do you mean by that? Do you know that the moon has no source of light in itself? The, the moon has no source. Well, you know this. The, the moon does not glow on its own. The sun shines on the moon and it reflects and that's why that big old sky was lit up last night when the moon was going over. Amen. The moon just reflects the sun. That's what we're called to do. We're called to reflect the light from Jesus Christ. Amen. It ain't me. There's nothing good in me. My, my righteousness is a filthy right. But it's him. Yeah. Yet God had mercy on their lives. 
the sting of death. There's something to be thankful for tonight. Amen. Now, let's go a little bit further in this story. It says there, you read the next few verses, 10 through 15. They're continuing on their journey. The Hebrew people being led by Moses is uh, continuing on their journey. They make a few more stops. And then they get to a place called, I won't have to pronounce it the way we pronounce it, Beer, amen? Bear. And from there, they went to, you see it on the screen, I'm thinking, uh, to Beer, which is where, excuse me, which is the well where the Lord said to Moses, gather the people together and I will give them water, amen? We just talked about what they were complaining. Then Israel sang the song. They gathered them together in the middle of a desert place. They gathered the people together, and then they began to sing as they are gathered around in this dry and arid place. And they began to sing, Spring up, O well. Spring up, O well. Spring up, O well, and all of you sing it too. Spring up, O well. Come on, bring it. Spring up, O well. Sing it. Spring up, O well. Y'all think some of the songs that we sing, well, they only have five lines, seven lines, and we sing them 11 times. Uh, Y'all think that's bad. They had one line, Danny. Spring up, O well. Spring up, O well. Spring up, O well. They began to praise the Lord. This was before the water come out, by the way. But the Bible says this, the well, excuse me, but the well, the leader sank, dug by the nation's nobles, by the lawgivers with their staves, and from the wilderness when they were in Mothana. In other words, what they did is they got the people together around this place. If they needed water, God said, I'm going to give you water. Get the people all together. They, they began to sing, spring up a well, and the nobles and the leaders took their staffs and were digging them in the ground and digging in and prodding and poking the ground all the while that the people are singing, spring up a well, spring up a well. Come on, sing, spring up a well, spring up a well. And they're doing that. And the water started coming bubbling out. That water started coming forth and bubbling out. I want you to get this. In this one chapter, we see this group of people, to begin with, are complaining because they have no water. Did they receive any water to begin with? No, they didn't. But then when they began to change their tune and began to instead praise the Lord, amen, that's what happened. That much needed water came forth and God gave it. Listen to me what I'm about to say. You can grumble and complain or you can praise the other pain. Amen. You know what I'm saying tonight? You can grumble and complain or you can praise and obtain. Too many times we get, especially the church, is bad about doing it. We'll grumble about every little old thing. So and so didn't speak to me. No, they didn't shake my hand. No, they didn't ask me to help on that committee. They didn't do this. They didn't do this. You can spend all the time you want complaining, or instead you change your thing and begin to praise God and see what He will do.
there is power when God's people will get together. When God's people will come together and God's people will come together in unity, when God's people will come together in praise, when God's people will come together like they did on the day of Pentecost in one mind, in one accord, I'm telling you that there are powerful things that happen. The Bible says that there is power when you pray in agreement with somebody. That there is power when you pray His presence when you get in fellowship with somebody. He said, if we're two or three are gathered in my name, I would be in the midst. Amen. You know, there's healing power will come when we begin to confess our sins to one another, pray for one another, that you might be healed. James chapter 5, verse 16. That there is power when we come together. There's one thing that our church needs, and I do and all church, we always need to come together. I'm not just talking about coming in the same room together. Come on. You can come together and not be together. You can the Hebrews chapter 10 says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Assembling. There's a little bit of a difference between gathering together and being assembled together. Can I use this example for you? Use this example. Invite y'all over to my house. Now, this is no four. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> oh, there won't be no war. There won't be no crazy when you get there. Amen. Y'all be like the Israelites. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, preach. Praise the Lord. Y'all I say, I want you to come out here to my garage and I want you to look at my new truck. And I open up the door, and there on the garage is four tires stacked up in the corner. The frame is sitting on the floor. The doors are hanging on the wall. The hood's over here. Tail lights are over there. It's all gathered in one place, but it ain't together. There's a lot of times I'm afraid that churches, they might all get in the same place, but they ain't gathered together. You said, in Hebrews, you said, assemble, you're not going to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. You know what that means? We've got to get together. You know what? We've got to get together and come together as the church, as a group of believers. And I preached about the power of God this morning that we can see revival. But I'm going to tell you this tonight. It's going to take the church coming together.
I mean, any way that we can, make sure that we get around with them, speak to them, I promise you, ain't nobody going to bite you if you just walk up to them and say, hey, how you doing? I'm glad to have you here tonight, amen? Ain't nobody going to bite you, ain't nobody going to get mad. As a matter of fact, you don't know how many times as a pastor, as a pastor, I've had people come here from other churches, and they would tell me, you know, I went to this church, so and so, or whatever. And they would say, you know what? I went there, and it's like nobody even saw me. Nobody even spoke to me. A person, they might not remember your name if you go up and speak to them, but I promise you they will remember if you didn't go up and speak to them. If you don't make them feel welcome, if you don't even take the time of the day to say something to them, I promise you when they walk out of the door, they will remember. Right. Yeah. But I ain't going that church up. They don't care if we're there or not. Right. We got to make sure we always come together. Yes, Lord. Amen. The power when you come together. The power when you come together and you pray together. Yes, Lord. I want to encourage the church to be praying for revival. Yes. I say revival that I mean that God would come and do what only God can do. That he would come, his presence would invade this sanctuary every time that we come into the house, yes. amen. And that he would come and burn in our hearts like a line of fire, like it was in the bones of Jeremiah. That we would have that fire burning in our hearts and that fire might catch on everybody else. Yes. Yes. Amen. There's, there's, there's power when we come together in praise and worship together. Amen. When we get in corporate settings just like this and we all come to sing and to worship and to praise God. And His manifested presence can come down right. in this place. Yeah. And yeah. the Bible is where the Spirit of the Lord is. Then there is liberty. Then there is freedom. Yeah. Yeah. And it is so important that we become a people of praise. Amen. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Look at the next part of that verse. It says this. Gather the people together and I will give them glory. They began to pray. They began to they began to praise, and they began to dig in. And guess what? The rest of the water started coming up. Come on, they, began. they began to praise, and they began to dig in. Thank you, Lord. And the water started coming up. I believe this tonight, as I read that. The reason I'm preaching this tonight. I believe that the Lord spoke to me on this particular verse as I had prepared Sunday mornings. That this will be a key to our church and our future. I, pre I preached about prayer this morning. I preached about the position of our hearts. That if we want to see God do great and mighty things, that we, uh, revivals are, are birthed out of prayer, not just the words from our lips, but the position of our heart. Amen. Yes, Lord. The psalm says that I long for you. As a deer pants for the water, I long and in my heart soul desire. You have got to be a position of our hearts to want revival. We to want to right. see God to do great mind things, not just from our lips. Right. But I believe this as well. Another part of that is going to be praise. Amen. Yes. Praise. I believe that praise is going to be key. That if we as God's people, if we will come together in this sanctuary, whether it's on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, if we yes. will praise the name of the Lord yes. on the good days and the bad days, when everything's going right or when everything's going wrong, I believe this with all of my heart. If we will become a people of praise, yes. that living water is going to start bubbling yes. up in this place.
we want to see the living water, if we want to see the Holy Ghost move in this place in a mighty way. Amen. Amen. It's going to take us being a people of praise. Would you turn with me one more place in Scripture tonight? Second Samuel chapter six. Second Samuel chapter six. Let's dig in and let's pray. And I tell you, we can learn a lot from King David. Man. I just want to read this a little bit to you. And I'm talking about praise. I'm talking about a praise in which you're not worried about the other person that's sitting next to you. That's right. That's right. Yep. I'm talking about a praise that you're not worried about what anybody else thinks. But you are just so grateful and you are so thankful yeah. for what God's done for you. You can't help a shout. Amen. 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 I love this story of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, the Bible says that he is bringing the Ark of the Covenant which represented the presence. It was the throne room. It thrown on, on earth, amen, where the Shekinah glory would come down and sit upon uh, the, the mercy seat between the cherubim. It was the throne of God on the earth. It was a place where the presence dwelt back in the Old Testament before he came in the hearts of men yes, after Jesus died. The Bible says that David, it's been late, go, go back a little bit, David was moving, he got the ark back from the Philistines, they were bringing it back, but he was trying to do it his way to start with, and he put it on a, a, a cart. The, the, the ark of the covenant was never intended to be transported on a cart. That's right. That's the way that the Philistines had done it, That's right. and David imitated them. In other words, it's kind of like this. The church was trying to do what the world would not do us to get God in a work, amen? There's too many churches that are trying to do worldly things in the house of God, and they expect the presence of God to come in and go to work, amen? And I work. The world does not need to be coming in and influencing the church. The world and the church needs to be influencing the world. Right. And we've got it backwards, just like David did. Yeah. Come on, go back and read a little bit. Right. But the Bible says that the, they were on a cart and it hit a hole, and, and a man reached out to stop the ark from falling off of the, the cart, and he died. That's right. Wasn't over free, it wasn't over goodness. David, you did not touch the ark of the right. goodness. Scared David to death, made David mad, actually. And then he comes to himself, he realizes he wasn't doing it God's way. That's right. He leaves it at the, uh, the house of Lewis, of the deal, of the deal we'll set it right. And God begins to bless his house. And David realizes, all right, God's, God's I can go get the ark now. And he goes to get the ark. And this is where we pick up, he's bringing the presence to Jerusalem, the presence of God. It says this, and so it was, when those buried in the ark, this time he did it right. He put it on a pole and he had four people carry it like he's supposed to. Look at this. As they were burying the ark of the Lord, they would take six posts. One, two, three, four, five, six. They would stop. They would make a sacrifice. They'd break out the band. And they'd go to praising God. Amen. Every six steps that they took, he would just be, he would stop and then he'd just make a sacrifice unto the Lord and he would just begin to praise the Lord. I wonder how your day would look tomorrow. I mean, if you just started one, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you, Lord, that I ain't took a break, break, baby. Let me just thank you because I made it six more steps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you forget how precious steps are. Just take six steps. I think my little sister Stacy right here. She ain't right now. She's so weak. She ain't never take them steps. Amen. Every morning you get up there. Thank you, Lord, for another step. Thank you, Lord. I'm able to get up and I'm able to walk and I'm able to go. I'm having fun if nobody else is there. He took six 
accept and he began to praise the Lord. Amen. Killed the oxen, killed the fat and sheep. And I went on. The Bible said David got so happy that David began to dance before the Lord with all of his might. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something right now. He wasn't no twerking. He wasn't apple bottom jeans. He wasn't baby getting low. He was dancing for the glory of God. He was dancing because he was so excited that the glory, that the presence was coming back to Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. When we get in the presence of God, when the power of God is in the house, it ought to make you want to shout. It ought to make you want to clap. Tent, really, 
one that I sent. And David arranged them that uh, then David offered even more sacrifices. Come on. And when David had finished offering the burnt offering to be offered, he blessed the people in the, the, in the name of the Lord, distributed among them uh, the, the women of the loaves of bread and you know, different things he gave to them. And then David returned back to his house. Sometimes people in your own house will be uncomfortable about, uncomfortable about how much you love Jesus. Sometimes people in your own house will be uncomfortable with how much you love the Lord. Can I tell you this? Go on and love him anyway. Go on and love him anyway. Listen to what David said. I like this. David returns to bless his household. Then Michal, the daughter of Saul, I keep throwing that in there because she, she kind of had that same spirit and attitude that Saul did, by the way. Came out to meet David. I believe she had her hands on her hip when she did it, too. <laughs> <laughs> or might have been this way. I don't know how your wife does it. Isn't it? I don't have one, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I, just get, I just get dirty letters of uh, uh, hitting the mail from people in the church office. <laughs> Amen. It ain't for them no way. Amen. 
It's for the one that died for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you, when the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God, when the Holy Ghost, infinite Spirit of God begins to touch somebody, can I tell you, something's going to happen, amen? That's right. That is exactly right. Let's not try to bind his love. Let's not try to pull him back. Amen. I believe this with all my heart. God said, if the people will praise and will dig in, the water's going to come up. Yeah. If God's church, I'm talking to any great church, I'm talking to the state of your church, I'm talking to us, that if we will be a people, I talked about prayer this morning, I'm not leaving that out, if we will be a people of praise, yes, Lord. so welcoming yeah. to the Spirit. Yes, God. And if we will press in, get hungry for Him, I'm telling you right now, oh, God's yeah. going to satisfy our soul and our yes. heart yes. by only He can. They were bringing the presence back to Jerusalem. He was bringing the presence back to Jerusalem, and he was praising all the Lord. Oh, I want us to welcome the presence back into this church without any reservation, without any stops or yield signs.
I told you this morning, I tried to print, uh, print my notes off, and it wouldn't, I couldn't do it. No matter where I went, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it here, couldn't do it at the house. God said, let me preach. Amen. God told me to let him preach tonight. That's what he's done. He's going to take this word lightly. Dig in. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Get hungry for the Lord. And praise him, church. Yes, I mean, I praise him. Like praise him. And the water's going to start bubbling up. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It's going to be our dismissal. They're probably going to sing out a little bit more. I don't know if they're going to sing a little bit more. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Get ready.